Michael Jackson Jr. didn't see that that uh, that story you're talking about. Didn't care about black women. I mean, in reality, that's the sad reality. But he the sad reality is he's just a stupid actor who got lucky because a lot of white people go to his movies. Right, and I and I I think someone should confront him with that question. I wish somebody would ask Samuel. Yeah, right. Sure, in Hollywood, when he walks down the the, the red carpet, why don't you look at the ads that Samuel L. Jackson Jr. is doing? Isn't he advertising a credit card now? They threw Alec Baldwin off, didn't they? I remember now. Baldwin was thrown off that lucrative fat account. Now they got this racist guy doing ads for that credit card. Maybe someone ought to look into that. Why don't you rip up your credit card? Whatever he sell, whatever he's selling. You have the power of the purse. You can react to those people. My he doesn't like white people. He wishes that the Muslim killers were white. My goodness, how much lower does it get than that? Why they shoot the black women, Sam? Hey, happy New Year. Uh, happy New Year to you. I can't wait. It's over already. I don't know what I'm. Does anyone do anything New Year's Eve? Hey, the trumpet. Hey. Even when I was a kid, I didn't go to Times Square. I knew lo losers went there from out of town. Who goes to Times Square? I was told even when I was a kid, don't go there for New Year's Eve. You'll get a pickpocket or someone will put a knife in your back. I never went. Who would go to Times Square for New Year's Eve to see the ball fall? And what, are we waiting for 2016? So that's all. And then what? What's happening in 2016? What's happening then? The same thing and the nothing to look forward to for the average person. From January 1st, you realize you have nothing to look forward to come January 4th? I think the first holiday doesn't appear till February. It used to be called Lincoln's birthday and uh, Washington's birthday. Uh, now they named it something else. They took away Lincoln and Washington from us. Then there's nothing like a long haul until spring, until uh, Easter. It's a long one. I remember when I was a kid in school, it was a nightmare after the holidays. The snow and slush and geometry and algebra and trigonometry and pencils and SATs. Man, it was a mess. High school was one of the worst years of my life, those years. Horrible. College was even worse. It was only when I got to graduate school that I actually enjoyed school, or meaning learning, because I could study what I was interested in instead of repetition of junk. The undergrad wasn't bad at Queens College. It was still a great school at that time. It was before open admissions when they let robots in. You know, with open admissions, they could have let a robot in to take a course. And if the robot failed it, they would have said there was robotism. Sears robotism that stopped the robot from advancing. A robot they would have sat in the seat. If the robot failed the test, yeah, it was robotism that did it. It was based on robotism. Then you could have robots marching. Stop the robotism. We must end robotism at Queen's College. <laughs> uh, you think we'll ever have the country back? Remember the theme of today's show? Come back, America. Come back, comma, America. Theme of today's show. Do you ever think we're going to get America back? Do you actually think anyone has the capacity to undo all the years of this fraud in the White House? And then the years before him of the of the bumbler, the bumbler who ruined America first. And then the eight years before him of Hillary Clinton's ruination of America. Oh, it's like the first time you've seen her. She was president already. She was running the country. He was diddling in the other room there. Well, he was running the country. He used the opportunity of the office to get ahead with women. She was running the country probably. What's this on the Drudge Report? Anxiety, a sixth sense which could save life. I agree, 100%. I think I said this to somebody the other day that, I, who was I talking with about it? That stress is underestimated uh, in terms of its value to our species. I've lived with anxiety my whole life. Look how well I've done. Who wants to live without anxiety? Then you, you're brain dead. You know that the normal state of a human being is actually to be slightly anxious all the time? Robert, I'm not kidding you. You don't believe it. Young people don't want to believe it. They think that they're going to reach a point in life where they have no stress. No, no. Stress is part. See, I study nature, so I know what stress is. Stress is what keeps us uh, sharp, keeps us on our toes. I'll give you a, a, a simple Michael example. You know, I'm not near the bay right now. I'm in uh, Southern California, but in the north, I live near the water. Every morning, I wake up and throw stale bread to the birds. Why? Because I always have too much bread. I'm a glute glutomaniac. I love gluten. A day without gluten is a day without sunshine to me. I love gluten. Love it. It's the staff of life for me. Morons, gluten-free. Mm, I never saw anything like this. The staff of life going back to Mesopotamia is wheat. 
Suddenly the idiot hippies grew up. Oh, it's not the same weed. It's my Monsanto did it. They ruined wheat. You can't eat it. I stopped eating it and I became a perfect person. Yeah, perfect person. Psychos on, on medication day and night. It's not this. It's that. Always looking for the single thing that caused all their problems. So anyway, I like to throw the bread, the stale. To me, stale bread is uh, day day old. I don't like anything that's not fresh at all. But you can't get bread in San Francisco unless you live near a bakery. In the suburbs, you know what the bread tastes like? Like uh, the outskirts of Cleveland. Horrible. Nothing. They don't know what a bagel is outside of New York. And even there, I don't eat them. You want a real bagel? I don't know where to get one today. What is a bagel anyway? It's basically uh, boiled dough. They should be boiled, not baked. But I don't want to get distracted for a minute. I want to talk about birds. Let's say I have three stale bagels, and I throw the bagels in the water. I don't throw them at once. I go, I zoom, zing, zang, 10, 20 feet apart off my deck. So the birds come flying off the roof, the seagulls, who I love to watch. They'll all go for the same bagel. They'll fight over the same bagel. But there's two more floating that I threw in the water. Boom, bang, bing. They'll go for A. They'll go for bagel A and start pecking each other with the big beak until one little shrimp uh, uh, seagull, the, the, the runt seagull, the schmendrick seagull, who's afraid of them, who's afraid of the scrimmage. He waits for the other morons to fight over the first bagel, and the schmendrick seagull flies in from the other side and grabs it. What I'm saying is I, it's in the human condition, the animal condition is what I'm getting at, to fight over things. It's the human condition. It's in the animal world. They fight over everything, even when they don't have to fight. And it makes you tougher. It's called survival of the fittest. So when you have a nanny-ninny society like ours, where they take away games and they take away, tag even, the sick women who are running these things, the ninny state, I wouldn't even call it the nanny state, the, the sissy state is what it really is. The sissy state is trying to make it into a world that can't exist. And I study nature to know what the real world is. That has absolutely nothing to do with anything that has preceded this conversation on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. I am live, back with you from uh, Southern California, Michael Savage. Basically, we're talking about a dance of death in the West which is the opening line to my book, Government Zero. How you stop this dance of death is uh, anyone's guess right now. I mean, I have 20, 40 points to, to do Save America, but no one seems to care about how to save America. Let's take one quick caller. Line 2, WVNN Radio Guy. Go ahead, please, comment or question what's on your mind. Guy, go ahead, please. If you could just Another superb uh, failure on the Savage Nation. Another great job of call screening and preparing the caller. Where is the caller? What's everyone's... Where is he? I can't hear him. Uh, I'm in Huntsville. Uh, where are you? Okay, Mark, line five. Go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Actually, my call screener is, is shot. It's completely disconnected. Jim, put up line two. Put him on the air. I can't hear him. We can't get any calls up. So what's the point of uh, fighting it? Uh, two crack team members working around the clock and no callers. No callers, that's all. Zero. No callers on the board, no callers on the show. So I'll just conclude by saying to you that there is a dance of death in the West, an actual death in the Middle East. We heard today about a rape manual being put out by ISIS, and nothing is being done to stop these maniacs by Barack Obama, who continues to lick an ice cone in Hawaii. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. It is the Savage Nation. The real story that got agitated me this morning is ISIS 
releasing a rape handbook to their scum, to their subhuman fighters, who, as far as I am concerned, should be rounded up. Oh, I don't want to go into it. It's a family show. I would use cluster bombs on them, and those that I would capture, I would throw into an arena with live pigs and put it on pay-per-view so the world can see the ISIS fighters screeching like the little girls they really are when they have no power. All of the vermin of the world, the losers of the world, the type of men, the subhumans that join Hitler to torture innocent people in concentration camps, the world's losers are coming from around the world to join ISIS, which makes them a convenient target for a neutron bomb. Now that we know where they all live. We used to be told, I remember 10 years ago, oh, you can't use warfare against radical Islam because it's everywhere. There's no organized state. There's no organized nation. There's no organized city. Oh, yes, there is. Oh, yeah, there is. They're all in a couple of cities now. And so if we had a real leader who really wanted to wipe ISIS out, it could be done in a few days. But I've said to you for months now, that ISIS is a creation of the United States of America and several other Western powers. It's a Frankenstein that was created to take down Assad as a factotum army and let them do the dirty work. After which time the Western powers figured they would then take on ISIS and dismember them. But instead they became a rabid mad dog army of insane people. Which is winning, by the way, not losing. So they release a handbook on, on how to treat your sex slaves. Fifteen sickening new rules revealed. A new guidance on the rules of rape put out by the Islamic State. Emphasis on I. New rules set out how members of the terrorist organization may treat their sex slaves. A Muslim fatwa was issued back in January, according to documents seized by U.S. Special Ops, which have only now been released, now that Obama's on vacation, I guess the government... Is uh, not as oppressive as it would be once he's back, the chief retrovirus. And it begins like this. I'm not making up one word for those of you who say this is not Islam. One of the graces which Allah has bestowed upon the state of caliphate, up, bestowed up the state of caliphate, is the conquest of large surface areas of the country. And one of the inevitable consequences of jihad is that women and children of infidels will become captives of Muslims. Attention, liberal morons. That means you and your children, you idiots, you. Go vote for Hillary, you psychos, you. Quote now, consequently, it is necessary to clarify some rules pertaining to captured prisoners to avoid any violations of Muslim rules in dealing with them. Here are the new rules for those of you who say it's not Islam. One, are you ready? It is not permissible for the owner of a female captive to have intercourse with her until after she has had a menstrual cycle and become clean. You see how clean these men are? You see how advanced they are as a civilized civilization? I mean, they do have rules. So if she's nine years old and she hasn't menstruated, they're so kind that they won't rape her unless someone's not looking. Two, if she does not menstruate and is pregnant, he is not allowed to have intercourse with her until after she has given birth. So don't tell me ISIS is not compassionate. This is a very compassionate army. Three, it is not permissible to cause her to abort if she is pregnant. So you see, they're very conservative in a way. They don't believe in abortion. They want another soldier being born or another sex slave. Four, if the owner of a female captive releases her, only he can have intercourse with her, and he cannot allow someone else to have intercourse with her. Five, if the owner of a female captive who has a daughter suitable for intercourse has sexual relations with the latter, he is not permitted to have intercourse with her mother. And she is permanently off limits to him. You see, they are very compassionate. This is a very sane organization. For those of you who argue it's not Islamic, you have to understand this is based upon Islamic interpretation by the uh, chief bugaboo who looked into the Quran for this advice. Number six. The owner of two sisters is not allowed to have intercourse with both of them. Rather, he may only have intercourse with one. The other sister is to be had by him. If he were to relinquish ownership of the first sister by selling her, giving her away, or releasing her. You see, so in many ways they think like progressives do. Seven. If the female captive is owned by a father, his son cannot have intercourse with her and vice versa. 
Moreover, intercourse with his wife's female captive is also not permissible. Hey, if a father